Hello and welcome to Stuka Time. My name is Brian McCallion, and today we're going to take a look at the Handy Talkie Radio, also known as the BC611. So let's take a look. Here we can see it in a little better detail. Here is the BC611, also known as the SCR536, or as we know it, the Handy Talkie. The Handy Talkie name actually came from reporters in the early 1940s, as they noticed that this was the first AM radio you can actually walk around, talk into, and get messages from. Before this, everything was mounted on heavy vehicles or in cars. This unit was actually developed in 1940 by the Gavin Manufacturing Company, and they produced it from 1941 until 1945, in total producing over 130,000 units. This company, in 1947, would change its name to Motorola and go on to make some cell phones, as we all know today. With the battery, the radio weighs a total of five pounds. The battery is kept inside the battery compartment, which is located under this cover. To put a battery in, what you do is you unscrew this, and it will open up. So, this is a two-part AB battery. These are both dry cells. One goes in here, and one goes in here. Once the batteries are in, they can only go in one way, you close the cover, and there's no on or off switch. Um, these radios were just very simple to use units, just put a battery in and go to town. People that would work on these, of course, knew a lot about them, but the troops that used them in the end really didn't. The biggest concern was to make sure you were on the right frequency. So if you look, it's a little faded, but this frequency is 3885, which was the standard frequency used by infantry units and companies during the war. There was actually 30 different frequencies that you can change these radios to. And that was because you had tankers, you had airplanes, you had so many different lines of communication that were used, they wanted to make everything straightforward. So 385 was the standard infantry um, band that they used with these. To use the radio, it's actually very simple. All we have to do is turn it on, and you unscrew this to see the antenna. The antenna actually is, let me bring it up better view here, the antenna actually is the on-off switch for the radio. The antenna is about five feet long, and if we extend it all the way, it's going to have to go off the camera. We can listen at the end, the click. This click is the radio actually turning on. Once the radio is on, it has no volume control, but it's actually not that loud. You're going to want to hold it up to your ear, but if you don't have it on your ear, it's not a very severe risk. The biggest thing with these was conserving the battery life. The battery life, if you were very careful with it and only turned it on when you had to use it, would last about one day. Um, these radios were very revolutionary. They came out in 1941 and were in full swing, used by the U.S. military by mid-1942. The Germans would actually capture these in North Africa in 1943 and be amazed that the Americans had this type of technology, as it was so advanced compared to anything that they had seen or anything that they'd used up to this time. The Germans actually would steal a lot of this technology and put it into later radio installments for themselves. From 1941 to 1945, in total, seven different versions of this radio would be produced. These all differed with small things like changes in the vacuum tubes and the coatings being used for tropical climates. Beginning with the A-series in 1941 and ending with the F-series in 1945, these were all marked on the dad tag here. This E-series denotes that it was produced sometime in 1944 and has the tropical coating for the South Pacific. These radios were also used in gliders and had a special attachment voice box where they could be plugged in and used on the ground and also as an intercom between planes in the gliders. These were called BC-721 units and were heavily used by airborne operations in 1944 and 1945. This was literally the only radio inside the glider during the war. I hope that you enjoyed this video on the Handy Talkie Radio. If you happen to like military history, then please check out my channel. Thank you very much for watching, and as always, until the next time...